ago, my name is Joel Miranda with Youth Build International and the Global Opportunity Youth Network. Uh, and so you've heard some of this at the beginning, but you know, just want to paint a picture of sort of the global challenge, right? There are 1.8 billion uh, young people uh, across the globe, 90% living in developing economies concentrated in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Co climate change conflict and increasing urbanization right, continue to sort of threaten right, the livelihood opportunities for these young people. 350 million youth are not connected to education, training, or formal jobs. 70 million youth are unemployed. Three out of four un uh, unemployed youth are female, and approximately 70% of employed youth are in the informal sector. Right? And, uh, 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 and we know, right, that especially with uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and global crisis hitting, these jobs are at risk. 1.6 billion jobs, informal jobs are at risk. For over 430 million uh, businesses facing are facing serious disruptions. And industries typically employing youth are hardest hit. Retail, manufacturing, hospitality, and tourism. We heard Hannah share that the gig economy is gonna be one of the largest employment sectors by the end of this year. Right, which uh, increasingly under threat, right, amidst global crises. We know across communities that there is an ecosystem of actors working to address youth unemployment. Um, they're, they're active and they're varied, but somewhat disconnected. And solutions that are being created at a local level meet a fraction of the total need. Young people are not involved, they're not always involved in the solution design. And responses don't address systemic challenges. Uh, and the and so the and the business case for corporate engagement is not well defined. Uh, at the GOYN, right, we're, uh, our goal is to drive place-based system shifts for youth economic opportunity. The overall vision is that global opportunity youth have access to dignified, productive, and sustainable entrepreneurship and employment pathways. Our goal is to create a 10% tipping point of change in communities that transforms outcomes for at least 300,000 and connects and improves lives for millions of young people. Yeah. Small number, we hope we have we, we hope we have greater impact, but we're starting there. And the timing is uh, through the 2030, um, uh, uh, sunsetting of the 2030 uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And so we've got this vision, we've got these goals, and, and we've got a timeline, right? But we know that we can't do this without young people helping us create both the agenda, the strategy, uh, the local, um, interventions, the local opportunities, the local pathways, right, to connect young people to the right skilling, training, and, 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 and dignified livelihood. And so at the GOYN, our goal is to support, uh, to support our community partners in developing the skills, aptitudes, attitudes, and capacity to really engage young people as partners, right? Uh, to move from uh, meeting with young people and getting a reaction or a response or feedback and input, all important, but in the past we've seen that this happens and adults walk away and say, thank you for your thinking, thank you for your response, and then go and design. And so the goal is for, at the GOYN, across our communities and across the global network, that we are co-designing, co-creating, co-facilitating with young people. And young people are invited to be part of a group process that assesses a situation or a problem statement, identifies potential solutions, designs practical applications, for implementation of those solutions and analyzes the results to inform the ongoing strategy and design process. This has been part of the uh, GOYN's DNA since its inception, since before its, its, its official announcement. Uh, the GOYN Youth Voice Agenda was highly informed and co-created by a group of 24 young people from 12 countries who came together in December of 2018 uh, to, to share challenges and solutions related to youth employment and youth leadership, to engage uh, the, this event, engage young people as design partners in the GOYN global strategy. It built a foundation for a global opportunity youth network and mobilized interest, capabilities, and commitment of allies of the GOYN. And so the result of this was a youth action agenda co-created with young people that engaged our anchor partners across uh, across GON communities and young people uh, in uh, activities that would organize, train, and inform young people sort of in the, 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 uh, the, the skills they would need to engage their peer groups, to convene uh, larger groups of young people and local stakeholders, to continue to build their capacity, 
to connect across global geographies via virtual exchanges like this one and via monthly global calls that young people from GOIN communities come together on, right, to share their work, the challenges, and how they are creating solutions in their local community. And through global uh, opportunity exchanges like global events and summits, I'll share a little bit more about those towards the end. At the moment, we have GOIN Youth Advisory Groups operating in five, fully launched uh, uh, GOIN Youth Advisory Groups operating in five communities, Pune, India, Ramgar, India, Bogota, Col Colombia, Mombasa, Kenya, and Sao Paulo, Brazil. And over the next three months, uh, we will be launching, we're actually in the early phases of or organizing uh, these youth advisory groups, launching uh, youth advisory groups in Etiquini, uh, South Africa, Mexico City, Mexico, and Tiaz, Senegal. So this is truly a gr growing community of uh, partner, uh, partners at the local level and young people who are creating these strategies in, at the local level and then coming together to share best practices at a global level. I, um, I've talked quite a bit now, uh, and I want to move to the more, more important part of this presentation, which is the conversation with our panelists. Uh, and so I would like to introduce you all, and I'm going to stop sharing at the moment so that I can see the panelists as well. Uh, I see them on the screen, but I'd rather see them here in video. So I want to introduce you to my colleagues, uh, James Ndungu, who uh, works for uh, a global Development Incubator, one of the six uh, um, six GOIN uh, founding uh, partner organizations, and James is uh, working with an amazing group of young people uh, who are part of the Youth Advisory Group. Uh, one who's joined us today, Aisha Abdallah. Hello, Aisha. Uh, and I also want to introduce you to Swati Mintz, uh, who is located in Ramgar, India. Uh, and Swati works with our anchor partner, uh, TRI, Transforming Rural India, uh, and she's engaging uh, 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 community partners and young people in the co-creation of the local strategy in, uh, in Ramgar. So first, welcome. Welcome to our panelists. I know that we have a few other panelists that are still trying to work through some technical difficulties and connect, but let's get started with, with the conversation. Uh, James, I'm going to turn to you first. Um, uh, uh, the uh, GOIN Mombasa, GOIN Mombasa was one of among the first three communities to launch in 2019, and uh, went through a, a, quite a thorough process of engaging young people in deep conversations, creating uh, uh, creating local strategies, and testing out some of those local strategies with other young people and other partners. Can you share a bit more about what that that process of engaging young people from the inception, right, uh, before anything exists, and engaging them in that co-creation process? How how did you do that? What was that like? Over to you, James. Thank you, Joel. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Um, James Dong, as Joel has mentioned, uh, based here in Mombasa, Kenya, uh, supporting Global Opportunity Network in Mombasa. And as Joel has shared. Uh, uh, at the heart of GON Mombasa and GON Globally is the inclusion of youth. This, uh, for last, allows young people to read in, uh, you know, finding solutions to their own problems at the community level. And our role becomes to guide them uh, through this process and to be able to identify with them these solutions and implement these solutions together with them. So for us, we feel like we are shifting the status quo from the top-down approach to you know, the bottom-up approach, uh, you know, anchoring uh, the solutions by the youth, with the youth, uh, in and across the youth desires uh, for their own, uh, their own future. So as Joel shared, um, we have been engaging young people directly or indirectly, you know, through building the capacities of uh, the young people that you're engaging with and tasking them with the role of engaging other young people in this uh, in their community. So through this process, of course, we are uh, supporting young people to you know, practice leadership laws, uh, to build their soft skills and technical skills, as well as, you know, enable them to be able to grow uh, their networks. And uh, in Mombasa, we have been engaging young people in with three key approaches. One um, is through a youth advisory group 
which for our case in Mombasa is a group constituted of uh, 15 young people drawn from all the six sub counties in Mombasa. And in their capacity, they are the official advisors to GON Mombasa initiative uh, and the leadership of GON Mombasa. So their role is to harness the youth voices from the sub counties and from the wards and from the villages where they come from and be able to bring these voices uh, in the core design, uh, in the initiative, and uh, to the leadership of the initiative uh, for that uh, to be incorporated um, in each and every aspect uh, of uh, implementing the initiative in Mombasa. Number two, we have been engaging young people uh, in the co-creation processes for all our solutions, uh, that is across our, our pathways, and not just the youth advisory group members in this case, but largely, uh, you know, incorporating other opportunity youth from uh, the communities. And in this case, we are keen to use human-centered design approaches, um, you know, uh, to just ensure that we are telling the story of Mombasa uh, by the people of Mombasa and by the youth of Mombasa. And we've used approaches like storytelling, we've, uh, you know, used approaches like uh, youth journey maps, um, rapid brainstorming sessions with the young people to just uh, be able to contextualize the needs uh, and the opportunities uh, for the young people in Mombasa. And number three, we have been engaging people as advocates of the youth agenda to key stakeholders in Mombasa and beyond. And in this case, we've been linking the youth to different platforms so they can be able to lobby for the youth agenda. Uh, we have supported them with uh, capacity building to you know, ensure that they are constructive in their submissions when they engage with these stakeholders and uh, you know, be solution-oriented rather than the traditional way that young people have been viewed as just being uh, part of the problem. So those are the three key approaches that we have applied. And um, we have seen you know, good uh, outcomes coming from these and uh, we continue to encourage everyone and you know other partners to be able to identify such approaches uh, as they engage with young people great thank you so much james uh, so so much there i want to dive in a little bit to the um the, the human-centered design approach that you employed as you were engaging young people. I know Faisal, who's uh, actually the chairperson and president of the Youth Advisory Group, was going to share a bit more about that. But uh, you know, would love for you, James or, or Aisha, to to share a little bit more about what that human process, that human-centered design process, was like. What came out of it? And, and Aisha, uh, I know that uh, it, James also spoke to you know. Uh, policy and advocacy training, perhaps you can share a bit more as a, as a young person who was engaged in these conversations to co-design, co-create, right? And to take it a step further, right? And start moving into policy recommendations. Can you share more a bit about that process, what you learned and what you are doing, right? As a youth advisory group to engage more young people. Thank you so much, Joel. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Esther. I am a member of the youth advisory group in Mombasa. And basically, we have been engaged a lot, as uh, James has said, because it's more of having youth at the table and not as the menu, but them at least stating what they want and how they want it to be done. And in, in the process of advocacy, we actually advocated. We actually advocated to have a training on policy and lobbying, and which it happened. And a number of us got to understand more a bit or more about it. And then we chose a committee to spearhead that. And all this I'm saying is just to show you that we are part of the process and we took part in each and every decision that we decided to have on our table. So through that, we used one, uh, we took one policy uh, from the county government, our county government, and looked at it and actually wrote down a number of recommendations and came up with a memorandum and shared it with them so that they can see on how they can add the youth voice in that in that policy and also give their way forward apart from that we took part in online advocacy we have uh, we had a teacher chat on structural injustice uh, that was i think a month back where we just educated uh, other young people and also tried to look at in mombasa to be specific what are the issues what kind of structural injustice do we have that are affecting young people in Mombasa. And I, I believe our online platform is actually an avenue whereby we can have 
a number of young people and the information actually stays, you know, so we can actually go and refer to each and every conversation that we had. So that is also another kind of advocacy that we've done. Apart from that, we have taken part in not just the youth advisory group, but the youth in general in Mombasa to actually sensitize the community on COVID-19. And that was uh, on the onset when uh, it started. Uh, we did sensitization just to create awareness on COVID-19. Uh, what are the effects or how can you go about preventing yourself on COVID-19? And all this we did not, we were not just told to do, but we actually saw the need of us having that uh, within our locality. And then through that, we ended up having a survey just to look at the effects of COVID-19 on the young people. And the, uh, the, the survey, we are yet to launch the findings, but one key thing that actually came up was the economic issues the young people are facing within the community and also the mental health aspect that has actually risen within our community and all these uh, just to see and also we came up with recommendations on what we want to do uh, or what 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 should happen actually within our community and then the other thing that we we have been able to do is because you know in the youth advisory group we decided to have uh, the UN has pathways so we decided that at least each leader uh, spearhead one pathway just to make sure that we all take part in the leadership process and because we believe in the power of voice to give each and every one of us uh, a voice to actually share uh, or, uh, or share their thoughts in regarding to any of the pathways uh, that we've been having. And some uh, one more important thing that we've been able to uh, see, which is very important to us, is the power to actually decide and also agree on what we want to be taught on and help us to build on a better word that will be uh, different. So we've been, we've been capacity to build on different things. And I'd give an example the other time we were taught on project management, because again, GRN is coming to actually uh, see how best young people can, can leverage on this opportunity. And uh, um, my implementation of this project is one of the things. So when the project comes, uh, one of the OIs, that is opportunity, you will be able to actually maybe lead a project. So such capacity buildings have been of importance to us. Thank you so much, uh, Joel. Th thank you, Aisha. That was a, uh, just very thorough response, right? Everything from early design to policy training, ongoing capacity building, and engaging each other and peers at a broader level via live tweet chat around structural injustices and how structural injustices pose barriers, right, to economic opportunity and dignified livelihoods. Uh, all, all in a year and a half, and most of this taking place during the pandemic, right? Just goes to show that uh, a pandemic cannot stop young people from building. Uh, uh, so thank you, Esha. I, I wanna turn over to uh, my colleagues in Ramgar. Um, first question will be for you, Swati. Um, you know, Ramgar, you'll share a little bit more, I know, but, you know, very rural community um, where, you know, you you arrived with questions and conversations around engaging young people to create and other partners to create uh, economic opportunities and livelihood pathways. Um, and all of this was a new conversation for everyone. Uh, can you share a bit more about how GOYN engaged young people in these conversations, how it was received, um, and then uh, what those conversations looked like? And then I, I, I want to turn, I'll turn to Sunita, Jadev, and Sumit for um, so what they took away from that. So over to you, Swati. Yeah, thanks, Joel, for uh, the question. And hello, everyone. So uh, GOYN in Ramgarh uh, was kicked off just in time of the COVID. Uh, so just to give a brief background, uh, uh, Ramgarh is a district in the state of Jharkhand in India. And Jharkhand stands as last five uh, states in, uh, in, uh, as per the Poverty Index Report of 2020. So at the time uh, GOYN was kicked off, uh, there was restlessness in the villages because of the migrant returning crisis, because you know thousands of uh, migrants had returned back to their villages due to the uh, lockdown imposed um, across the country uh, by the government. Uh, so it was a challenging process for us to engage with the youth uh, in the rural uh, areas. And uh, so we started by, you know, uh, organizing small meetings, in-person meetings uh, with the young people. 
and during the processes i came to know that youth have never heard about any uh, interventions or any in initiatives which which talks about youth being at the center so uh, it was received with much amusement and uh, uh, yeah and 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 you know uh, the youth had heard about uh, terms like youth leadership but they did not actually uh, they, they did not actually knew what it is meant by uh, the uh, words like youth leadership so it was like a dream come true for uh, the young people in the community and also you know uh, for, uh, yeah uh, for the young people in the community because you know it was the first uh, of a kind uh which uh, which was going to involve the young people uh so in order to involve the young people in the co designing processes we start with the formation of the youth advisory group uh so it, this was a, a group of young people which was formed at the uh, district level so a uh, youth from uh, the different blocks the blocks are the sub district uh, levels so uh, there was partic re participation representation from all the blocks and the uh, youth advisory group um uh, has an active involvement in the uh, co-designing, in the planning, and also they it it acts as an advisory group uh, to make sure the youth voice uh, is is involved in all the you know interventions. And as in GOIN, we talk uh, we, we say that there's no silver uh, bullet for any problem, and there needs to be a place based solutions. So uh, young people were involved in the aspiration mapping of the. Uh, uh, of the opportunity youth of Ramgar uh, to understand more about their challenges and their aspirations to basically understand what understand the gap between you know youth aspiration and the opportunities available so uh, and similarly the young people they were involved in uh, um, identifying uh, potential local opportunities uh, and you know in the and, in, and also in the detailed studies and field assessments of it and uh, then uh, we had the second wave of covid unfortunately and uh, yeah so as a response uh, to this covid uh, covid um, uh, um, hit uh, rural areas so we have identified you know with uh, actually the the youth advisory group identified young people uh, from the villages uh, who will be trained and will be involved in the screening and triage of COVID cases, uh, the initial testing of it, and also in the information dissemination. And with this intervention, we are looking uh, 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 at engaging around 600 uh, young people uh, in the rural areas. So, uh, you know, uh, so youth, so the, so the young people have been involved um, in the planning, the, in the planning, designing, and also the field intervention, and this has created and uh, created organic linkages between the GOI structures and the young people. And I would like to conclude by saying that a GOI has uh, not only engaged with the young people for taking up the intervention, but also engaged with the young people for the uh, for uh, for the personal development of the uh, youth yeah because uh, yeah by organizing various uh, events like you know career readiness program and capacity building around uh, you know forming resilience uh, in times of covid so, uh, so 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 like this you know there has been a multi dimensional growth of young uh, person which we are looking at thanks joel over to you Joel, we can't hear you. You have muted your mic. Oh, well, uh, this, uh, this is virtual presentation 101 that I just myself just failed. <laughs> so uh, I was just thanking Swati and, and, and congratulating for accomplishing so much under right such difficult circumstances, right? You started organizing a youth advisory group and it started having these conversations as COVID was hitting. We had to move to doing everything virtually. Often, uh, many of the young people only knew each other from the shoulders up because they were seeing each other on screens. Um, and you've just accomplished so much. Uh, I want to turn to uh, Sunita and to uh, to Sumit, uh, Sunita and Jada. Uh, Sumit, I know that you had, you'd been part of this process early on. Um, uh, and uh, <clears throat> the, the first few young people to be engaged uh, in these conversations. How you were engaged in the creation of local strategies. Uh, 
now it's for me uh, joel thank you ah okay uh, um as a part of a gyn member uh, as a yag uh, it has been a proud moment for me to share something uh, in this uh, platform so gyn is uh, doing a splendid job for the young people in our community as well as uh, for the whole society also uh, it is the first organization in our region which associated with the uh, young leader like youth fellows yags who are trying to find the opportunity in the community and and also trying to find their problems aspirations and needs to improve their lifestyles also they the best part of the uh, initiative is to collaborate with the uh, young leader of the community to find that what type of services they want and what type of needs they do uh, from our from us uh, through the working team of goin Uh, we observe that uh, and analyze that uh, uh, what type of uh, job he, he wanted to do uh, then we can go for the uh, framing the uh, uh, infrastructure as well as uh, of we have we have to provide them and uh, we also uh, gyi also uh, conducted uh, many programs in our co community many training programs for the youth also like uh, Uh, capacity building program career career readiness program spoken english training and uh, skill based trade based skill training and registration for uh, registration of youth in our government uh, port portal also we have uh, we are trying to easy the process to grab their opportunities and job also uh, so join so as a platform Uh, providing many type of new new opportunities to our opportunity youth and uh, in 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 spite of the youth also in spite of youth gyn also initiated many uh, social welfare type of types of programs also like uh, in this um, uh, covid scenario uh, we also conducted many awareness program and uh, programs in the community and uh, vaccination uh, for vaccination we also registered Um, uh, approximately 1000 to 1500 people in the uh, government portal for their proper vaccination and we make them easy to take vaccination and also aware us aware them aware them thanks you thanks thank you thank you a lot of great work happening in difficult circumstances i'm going to now turn to sumita Uh, Sumit, can you yeah, mute your mic? I'm I'm going to speak perfect. I'm going to turn to Sunita. Um, Sunita, if you're able to, uh, please turn on your camera. If if you're not able to, that's about, oh, there we are. Hi, Sunita. So, question for you: You were also engaged very early on as one of the youth advisory group members, co-designing strategies and also taking a look at what local barriers were for young people. Uh, What did you learn through this process? Can you share a bit more about what you got out of it, what you put into it? I'm going to share with our audience that um, Sunita will be responding in Hindi, and we will be uh, we will be providing a translated transcript of Sunita's comments in the chat box. So, over to you, Sunita. Global Opportunity Youth Network. हमारे क्षेत्र में चल रही दूसरी संस्थाओं की तुलना में ये है क्योंकि यह एक युवा संचालित प्रोग्राम है जो युवाओं के द्वारा संचालित किया गया है क्योंकि एक युवा की जो समस्याएं होती है या जो कठिनाइयां होती हैं वो बस एक युवा ही समझ सकता है जियो वाई एन प्रोग्राम का मुख्य उद्देश्य है फॉर द यूथ बाय द यूथ युवाओं के द्वारा युवाओं के लिए रामगढ़ क्षेत्र में जियो एन के माध्यम से एक ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म युवाओं के मिला है जहां वो अपने समस्याओं को खुलकर रख सकते हैं अपने कठिनाइयों को खुल के बता सकते हैं जियो एन के माध्यम से फर्स्ट टाइम युवाओं को नेतृत्व करने का अवसर प्रदान हुआ है जियो आई एन प्रोग्राम में जो भी कार्य है उन्हें संचालित करने के लिए हमारे जिला स्तरीय जिला स्तरीय एक यूथ एडवाइजरी बनाया गया है जिसमें ताकि कि इस ग्रुप के युवा बाकी युवाओं का वॉइस बन सके हमारे वाई ग्रुप में रामगढ़ जिला के सभी ब्लॉक के युवा शामिल हैं 
क्योंकि हम रामगढ़ क्षेत्र के सभी जगहों की समस्याओं को जान पाए और उनकी समाधान निकाल पाए ग्लोबल अपॉर्चुनिटी यूथ नेटवर्क प्रोग्राम हमारे क्षेत्र में बिल्कुल ही अलग प्रोग्राम है क्योंकि यह प्रोग्राम युवाओं को कौशल प्रशिक्षण कंप्यूटर ट्रेनिंग इंग्लिश स्पोकन कोर्स एम्प्लॉयमेंट एक्सचेंज में रजिस्ट्रेशन समेत विभिन्न प्रकार के नए नए अवसर प्रदान कर रहे हैं जिसके माध्यम से युवा समाज में अनेक प्रकार के भेदभाव चाहे वो जातिगत भेदभाव हो या लिंग भेदभाव हो या धार्मिक भेदभाव समेत समाज के अन्य प्रकार की समस्याओं को दूर करने के लिए धीरे धीरे सक्षम होते नजर आ रहे हैं रामगढ़ क्षेत्र के युवाओं को डिपेंडेंट बनाने के लिए जियो विभिन्न प्रकार के ट्रेनिंग आदि करा रही है इसके अलावा जियो प्रोग्राम क्षेत्र में वर्तमान की समस्याओं को देखते हुए कई सकारात्मक कदम उठा रही है जैसे वर्तमान में हमारे क्षेत्र में बढ़ते कोरोना इन्फेक्शन के देखते हुए जियो के युवा टीम ने लोगों के बीच डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म के माध्यम से कोरोना इन्फेक्शन से बचने के लिए जागरूक कर रहे हैं तथा उनका रजिस्ट्रेशन भी करा रहे हैं हमारे क्षेत्र में पहली बार डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म के माध्यम से लोगों को अवेयरनेस दिया जा रहा है इस प्रकार जियो युवाओं के उत्थान के साथ साथ हमारे सामाजिक कार्य में भी बहुत मदद कर रहे हैं इन्हीं सब कारणों से जियो प्रोग्राम अन्य संस्थाओं से बिल्कुल अलग है धन्यवाद ज्वेल सर थैंक यू सुनीता थैंक यू फॉर योर 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 कमेंट्स देयर वाज अ लॉट देयर um uh i want to you, you shared a bit about how you were engaged in the design process i want to i want to turn to jdev and and jdev can you share a bit more about uh can you share like what came out of Sunita talked about what went into it, but what came out of that design process um, as, as one of the original members of the Youth Advisory Group? Uh, share a bit more. And for our audience members, again, JDEV will also be replying in Hindi and will be copying a transcript in English into the chat box. Over to you, JDEV. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Global Opportunity Youth Network ka design process yuvaho par kendrit hai. जियो वायन रामगढ़ की संरचना में कोर डिजाइन प्रोसेस में टॉप टू बॉटम पर आधारित नहीं है इसमें से प्लानिंग से संरचना के आधार पर जिले के तमाम प्रखंडों में जरूरत के अनुसार यूथ हब का गठन किया गया है और उनका संचालन किया जा रहा है साथ ही जिले में एकमात्र गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज है जिसमें से युवाओं और छात्रों के जरूरत को जानते हुए वाईजी मेंबर के सजेशन से एक यूथ हब का गठन कर संचालित किया जा रहा है आकांक्षा मैपिंग जियो वाई एन की नीतियों के आधार पर क्षेत्र के युवाओं की आकांक्षाओं को जानकर उसकी सूची तैयार कर उस पर कार्य किया जा रहा है समूह चर्चाओं में युवाओं को जोड़ना क्षेत्र के तमाम शहरी व ग्रामीण इलाकों में यूथ फेलो एवं वाई मेंबर के माध्यम से समूह में चर्चा आयोजित की जाती है युवाओं को अवसर प्रदान करना युवाओं की रुचि एवं उसके जरूरत को जानकर उन्हें जागरूक एवं प्रोत्साहित करते हुए उन्हें नए अवसर प्रदान किए जा रहे हैं युवाओं के लिए सकारात्मक दिशा में कार्य जियो के द्वारा युवाओं के लक्ष्य के प्राप्ति के लिए उन्हें स्वावलंबी बनाने के लिए कई स्तर से प्रयास किए जा रहे हैं सहभागिता के साथ कार्य जियो ने सभी जगह पर अपने विभिन्न स्तर पर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप बना रखी है जो समय समय पर जानकारियां शेयर करती है और मिलकर काम किया जाता है प्रत्येक महीने वर्किंग ग्रुप की मीटिंग होती है जिसमें से जिले के अधिकारी डीडीएम, एलडीएम, कृषि वैज्ञानिक एवं अन्य अधिकारियों के साथ वाई मेंबर एम पी ओ वाई के टीम की मीटिंग होती है और जिसमें से वाई की मुख्य भूमिका होती है और वाई की के द्वारा दिया गया के आधार पर कार्य योजना तैयार की जाती है हमारे रामगढ़ में लाह और सकरकंद रिसर्च हुआ जिसमें से एक्सपर्ट के साथ साथ यूथ फेलो एवं वाई मेंबर भी भाग लिए और रिसर्च को अच्छी तरीके से पूरा किया गया अब हम लोग आगे लाह और सकरकंद के अच्छे उत्पादन के लिए प्रयास कर रहे हैं अभी कोविड 19 के कारण जियो वाई का काम थोड़ा सा धीमा चल रहा है आ, हम लोग कोविड 19 से उभरने के बाद में 
अगले की तरह अपने काम को गति देंगे धन्यवाद जीवन सर थैंक यू जय सो देर वॉज यू नो Uh, something you shared there um, that I thought is worth bringing up, right? Is you know, GYN uh, is working at a global level and across communities, right, to identify opportunities, uh, um, economic opportunities, pathways into dignified livelihood, right? And as we're engaging young people in the co-creation process, in the capacity building, skills training, right, so that they can engage in these processes. Jada, Jada spoke to something there. That's really important as uh, as as an employment skill, right? He said that this increased his confidence, right, and also the knowledge level of the young people um, as they have become the faces of GYN in their communities. And uh, you know, I as someone who has who's engaged with the young people since uh, since. Uh, they've launched in each of their communities. I've seen the young people be more comfortable with virtual modalities, right? Like like hop in, like Zoom. Uh, we've engaged in sessions, right? Re- using simultaneous translation, using things like Mural, using things like Jamboard. And so often the young people who are coming uh, to these conversations are saying that they've, they're just learning new tools to interact with the world differently. And in the process, learning a lot about themselves right and if we are and if our goal right is to create opportunity pathways livelihood pathways then our goal also has to be to equip with the young people right with all of the the hard skills soft skills right the personal skills that they're going to need to be able to engage in that world um, and engage well right and bring all of their true and full selves uh, to those spaces and so my next question is 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 a little bit more of a less about sort of co-creation and strategy and more about um, sort of what you've learned through this process. I believe that we you know the young people learn valuable skills and the adults working with the young people are learning something about young people, their communities, and also about themselves as adults engaging in this type of work. And so I'm going to start with Swati and James that you know as 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 uh, Two people tasked, right? We're going in and, and facilitating these conversations um, with young people, and I know you you both are also young, right? We're all we're we're all young. I'm young at heart, maybe not age wise, but I'm still young at heart. But what have you? What do you? What you learn about opportunity youth, right? That you didn't know before, right? What's sort of your takeaway, uh, James? I'll start with you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Joel. Uh, I'm I'm not just young at heart, but I'm also <laughs> a young person as well. Uh, with the definition that we have in Kenya. And I mean, yes. it's such a great thing that uh, GYN is not just preaching water and drinking wine, uh, but they are preaching water and uh, you know, drinking water by offering young people like me the opportunity you know, to be able to serve and engage my peers as other young people uh, throughout this and uh, the empowerment journey. So to your question, one of the key things that Joel have learned over the years and over working with GYN and engaging young people, it's the willingness, number one, and the potential, uh, the capacity that young people do hold. Um, most of the time we've seen, um, you know, programmers just consult young people for the sake of consulting them or engage them just for picking a box. But uh, young people and programmers need to appreciate that young people do have a pot- they do have potential, they have the capacity to be able to engage uh, in their empowerment journey. And it becomes the role, uh, love, uh, uh, you know, the duty bearers, or if you want to call them uh, the adults, to be able to, you know, focus on empowering young people and support them to exploit this potential. And uh, my, what, what this leads me to is that young people, uh, you know, I'll have the capacity and are willing to be co-creators and co-implementers of solutions uh, that we as uh, uh, development partners, governments, and, and any other person, uh, you know, are running. And we need to be able to, you know, make young people, support young people to not just be mere consumers of these interventions, mm-hmm. but uh, also be able to empower them to be the co-creators to these solutions because they have the solutions within them and our work is very easy but i think we have always uh tended to use to make it very hard for ourselves to be able to you know realize uh the impact that we want to do so that's that's what i would want uh, everyone uh, to be able to 
take home uh, from this engagement and from the lessons that I've learned. Yes, th thank you for that, James. Um, Swati, over to you. Same question. Whatever you know, you you, you walked in uh, just bringing in you know concepts that were very foreign to to the, to the community, right? And uh, met with some amusement, but a lot of great great progress has been made. What have you learned from the young people in the community over the course of this last year, especially? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Joel, for the question. And a very distinctive feature of, you know, working with the uh, rural youth, I can say that, you know, that, that um, whenever a new thing is introduced in the community, uh, uh, they won't follow it until and unless they have seen certain examples uh, of it. Yeah. So there were many barriers, uh, especially at the mental level, and uh, to address that, uh, much extensive work uh, was done at the action level. You know, to make them understand, and you know, to make them convinced about you know uh, 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 the, the things which we are doing. And uh, suddenly, I was like very much amazed uh, to see the huge potential uh, which the uh, rural uh, youth of Ram uh, within the rural youth of Ramgar, yeah, because you know it's a it's a very time consuming uh yeah, all all it needs uh is you know the, the trust building between uh between us and the young people and once that um, bond is established um you know uh, uh, uh the young people they have the potential to change the faces of the communities uh, well it's a very time consuming process you know this trust building but but you know once that achieved you know there's no stopping uh, i would i would just like to quote an example like recently GOI uh, has had launched the youth innovations uh, fund and the kind of ideas the kind of responses the kind of applications which we received from the rural youth uh, they were amazing uh, to see and um, thirdly GOYN has given a global platform for the youth to you know share about their ideas and you know to interact with youth from other communities uh, and for example in our joint YAG calls uh, which which also serves as a peer learning platform uh, and and you know uh, so, so all what the youth need is you know they want uh, to be heard yeah and lastly, uh, GeoVine has engaged in uh, building the capacity, has, has deeply engaged in building the capacities of the young people, uh, which is very, which is a very important part uh, because, you know, for finding solutions, we, we are going back to the youth, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so it's very important to also uh, enhance their skills uh, and, and also the capacities uh, uh, for that. Thanks, thanks, Joel. Thank, thank you, Swati. I'm gonna turn um, turn to the young people on the line. You know, uh, as you've engaged in this process, you've developed skills. You've also helped create a community of local young leaders. Uh, let's start with Sunita. Sunita, what did you know? What have you learned about uh, about yourself through the process? That what have you learned about yourself that has helped you develop skills? Um, that you're going to take with you sort of the next part of your life. Over to you, Sunita. Jio Vayan se jodke mujhe ek alag pehchan mili hai. Apne samaj mein mujhe ek samman janak jagha mili hai. Main nimn jati se hu aur hamare Ramgar chhetre mein nimn jati ko logo ko in bhavna se dekha jata hai. Aur main ek mahila bhi hu. Hamare Ramgar chhetre mein mahilaon ko ghar se bahar nikal ke kam karne ki ijazat nahi. है हमारे यहां लड़कियों की बहुत कम उम्र में ही शादी करा दी जाती है और उन्हें घर परिवार के बंधन से बांध दिया जाता है जिसके वजह से लड़कियां कभी सोच ही नहीं पाती है कि वो अपने जीवन में कुछ कर पाए अपने पैरों पे खड़े हो पाए जिसके वजह से उन्हें जिंदगी भर दूसरे पे आश्रित रहना पड़ता है मेरी भी बहुत कम उम्र में ही शादी करा दी गई थी और घर परिवार के बंधन से मुझे भी बांध दिया गया था मैं अपने समाज में अपने क्षेत्र की युवा युवतियों के लिए बहुत कुछ करना चाहती थी पर मैं वो कैसे करूं ये मुझे पता नहीं था जियो बाइन से जुड़ने के बाद मुझे वह राह दिखा लेकिन उस राह पे चलना मेरे लिए आसान नहीं था क्योंकि मैं जब भी घर से बाहर निकलती युवाओं से मिलती उनसे बातें करती मीटिंग करती तो मुझे लोग तरह तरह की बातें बोलते मुझे एक संदेह भरे नजर से देखते हैं यहाँ तक कि वो मेरे घर में आके मेरे 
परिवार वालों से बोलते कि आपकी बहू घर से बाहर निकलती है लोगों के बीच जाती है युवाओं से बात करती है क्या उन्हें अपना महिला होने का लिहाज नहीं है ये सब बातें सुनकर मेरे भी घर वाले मुझे ये काम छोड़ने को बोलने लगे पर मैंने उन्हें समझाया कि अगर आज मैं उन सभी की बात सुनकर घर में बैठ जाऊंगी तो मैं कभी अपने क्षेत्र की युवा युवतियों के लिए कुछ नहीं कर पाऊंगी जियो वाई एन से जुड़कर मुझे मेरा अपना पर्सनल ग्रोथ भी बहुत बढ़ा है मैं पहले चार पांच लोगों के पास ठीक से बोल भी नहीं पाती थी अपनी बातों को ठीक से रख भी नहीं पाती थी पर आज मैं किसी भी सभा में या किसी भी मीटिंग में अच्छे से बोल भी पाती हूँ और अपने बातों को अच्छे से लोगों के सामने रख भी पाती हूँ जियो वायन से जुड़कर मेरे अंदर आत्मविश्वास जगा है कि मैं अपने क्षेत्र की युवतियों के लिए युवाओं के लिए बहुत कुछ कर सकती हूँ और मैं जियो वायन का धन्यवाद कहना चाहती हूँ जिसके वजह से मुझे आज ये शुभ अवसर मिला है कि मैं ग्लोबल टीम के सामने अपने जीवन के बारे में कुछ बातें बता सकती हूँ थैंक यू ज्वेल सर एंड थैंक यू स्वाति मैम Thank, thank you, Sunita. I'm gonna now. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll leave Ramgar for a few minutes and go over to Asia, to Mombasa. Asia, what what you learned about uh, about yourself, your skills, your potential, right, throughout this process? Thank you so much, Joel. And actually, it's been an honor to be part of Jua, and because it has actually shown me the world. And what do I mean? Because Jua N has showed us different communities. and one thing that i have learned is at some point you have the same issues uh, people from india uh, the young people from india are facing the same uh, the same problems as we from mombasa and also the same as bogota you know so it has shown me the world and also it has opened me to different ideas to actually be able to look at the world differently and how i used to perceive uh, us as young people that maybe we cannot be better leaders but now i have a different perception of leadership and also how young people should be involved in leadership position and something else that i've also learned is about uh, the power of the voice uh, the young people have a, a huge power that we actually never know about and that is the our voice our voice is our power but then we are actually uh, left out because you don't know that but your end has shown it to us through us sitting at the table we have seen the power that we have in terms of even uh, questioning and even asking the right questions and then it has shown us especially me the capabilities or that we as young people are capable and we are able to actually take lead be part of conversation and also a lead projects that maybe they were thought that we have to be a professional or you have to have done this but just with a little support then we are able to do that and uh, there's something that i've also seen uh, this model to to say Uh, give young people a greater voice uh, they are the future and they are as much uh, uh, sorry he say that give young people a greater voice uh, it is important because they are not just the future leaders but their future of today and tomorrow you know uh, that is to mean that we have to open up we have to uh, give a platform for young people to share their voices uh, because they will not only lead tomorrow but they can start leading today and then last but not least is the importance of of empowering uh, us young people at a tender age it has uh, proven that it is really important and uh, for young people to be empowered uh, as uh, as young as they are because then we are secure we are securing the 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 future of this uh, young person's life to mean that they can make some decisions and they it means that they will grow by age and they will acquire more skills as they grow day by day uh thank you so much for the opportunity and i think those are among of my best learnings uh through gui and thank you jo thank you aisha uh, uh, and you know i continue to learn from you all right about just just uh about what's possible and i i one i want to thank my panelists so uh those of you in the audience if you can in the chat join me in thanking them for sharing their wisdom their experience their realities i i always say that our jobs our biggest responsibility as adult allies right uh, once we once we come out of being a young person and we and, and we and we call ourselves adult allies our job is to 
provide the support, right? The support and 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 partnership to young people to help them create the communities uh, and the world that they not only aspire to live in but that they deserve to live in and that's a community with reduced inequalities right with with dignified family sustaining jobs right and with sustainable communities um and so thank you uh, to our audience for joining us. Thank you for the panelists. I want to just share, there, were a few, there was a question around giving young people sort of like real, uh, the, the opportunity to work on projects of their own. I, I will share my screen quickly uh, to share a quick update and an invitation to everyone on the line. Uh, 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 as of this week, uh, we have identified, we have, uh, as of three months ago, we launched our Global Opportunity Youth Network Youth Innovations Fund. The goal of this fund is to support young people, to catalyze opportunity youth-led actions to address the barriers that young people face to productive livelihoods, to train young people, the young leaders, and the skills required to plan uh, these uh, actions, uh, incentivize their analysis and the mapping of barriers, and to enable experimentation and innovation, right? Investing in their vision and their thinking and their solutions. Uh, we just wrapped up uh, uh, an, uh, an application process that yielded uh, 234 applications across six communities. This was a pilot program for us, um, and out of that, we will uh, we will be selecting 30. Uh, we've selected 30 projects that we've just announced to our anchor partners last week, and are uh, uh, will be announcing to the world very very soon. Uh, the young people are just getting started on their projects. Uh, and they range on everything from gender equity, environmental justice, structural, addressing structural injustices, the creative economy, the green economy, young people's thinking on how to best approach those, uh, uh, those topics. And we want to invite you to join us on Wednesday, uh, 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 Wednesday the 8th and Thursday the 9th of September 2021. Uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Time to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We're working across many time zones, three hours each day, for a two-day event right, that will unveil the youth-led innovations executed by this round one of Youth Innovation Fund innovators. They'll share their learnings and experiences, share toolkits they're creating. We'll provide capacity building sessions for young people who are attending and are interested in leading local projects. Um, and we'll preview the next round of our Youth Innovations Fund. So uh, we'll go to goyn.org to learn more about GOYN, learn more about the event, and we will be uh, we will be sharing with our partners at the YMCA and and with you all more information about this amazing event. So thank you to to you all, to the young people, to my colleagues who are investing in and caring for young people. Uh, and with that, I will say goodbye, and we've got to end in transition. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. you so much, Joel. Thank you, Jens, Sumit, Isha, Swati, Sunita, and Jada for that amazing session. I've made lots of notes myself and found it absolutely fascinating. Thank you to everyone who's watching. Let's move now to the plenary stage for the next plenary session that will start in five minutes. Thank you, everyone, and see you at the plenary stage. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye.